Good day slash night to everyone watching at home. We're going to look at resume writing for work in the community, work studies, whatever work related subject you guys are doing at home. When we're looking at what our resume is, it's our way of showing who we are to our employer, to our future employer, hopefully. We're trying to show why we should get a job there, what we bring to the job and give them a quick snapshot of what, who we are, who I am as a person, because nine times out of 10, they don't know you very well at all. A resume is something that you need to apply for all jobs. When we're looking at what goes into a resume, your title, the heading, the big thing that should the banner that should separate you from everybody else is your name. Your resume needs to be a way for your employer to identify you to see who you are. So it has to have your name at the top. Beneath that, your phone number and your email address. If you don't have your phone number and your email address, that limits the ways that your employer can come into contact with you. If they do want to offer you an interview or even offer you a job, but they don't have your phone number and or your email address, then there's limited ways that they can offer you those opportunities. So make sure that these are active and these are regularly checked by you. Nothing is worse than an employer trying to call somebody and getting an old phone number or email somebody knowing that they're not going to check it. You can have this top section set up in any way that, that benefits you. I like to have the three set up in the center of the page so that that way it's, you know, top, center, right where people's eyes are drawn to initially. If you're struggling with how to set up your resume, the easiest way is to go into Microsoft Word, go on the templates and look for the resume template. But they're the most essential things because without those, you have no way of getting a job. They have no way of offering you a job. The next thing that's most relevant to you guys at home is your education. All of you are still students, which means your education will say Kellyville High School 2020 and then whatever year you're in because you haven't graduated yet. Your schooling, your education is still active. So it's going to be up to this day. As of 2020, I'm in year 11, 12, 10 even. When we look at what goes into education, we're going to come to our qualifications, but if you're currently doing a TAFE course, if you're doing a course outside of school, that would also fit under education as well, because it's something that you're in the middle of. It's not something that you've completed just yet. The next topic is something that I personally don't like to put in a resume, a lot of other people do. We've got the hobbies. The thought is that people will put their hobbies in there to give the employer an opportunity to see who they are and what they like doing. I feel as though it's a bit more professional if I don't put my hobbies in there. I want my education and me as a person to come through in the resume and in the interview. So personally, I don't like that, but if you are going to put your hobbies, put things that show that you're a good worker, put things that show that you're a good person. So you're gonna to wanna to put some sporting activities. I enjoy swimming, I enjoy playing soccer, I'm good at team sports. I'm a team player by doing these team sports. Obviously swimming isn't a team sport, but it shows that you're active. I like reading. You know, don't, don't write Fortnite. Don't say that you enjoy playing Fortnite for hours on end. That's not something that an employer wants to see or wants to know. They might want to know that, but that's not going to help you get a job. So hobbies, I put a question mark there because it's a bit of a question mark situation for me. Next, we've got work experience. These are all of the jobs that you've done up until now. All of the things that you've practiced, all of the different work that you have done. Some of you might have part-time jobs or might have had part-time jobs that you're not doing right now. So you're going to put down the part-time jobs that you've done. Some of you guys have done work experience through school, whether that's at Endeavor or at Coles, at whatever workplace that you've done, that's going to go down for however long you've done it for. You're going to put your rough dates or the time spent there. My advice is get a little bit creative with how you write down the amount of time that you spent there. If you went there once a week, 
but you weren't there for the whole year, then you were there for a year. You weren't there every day for a year, but you were doing work experience there for a whole year. Then we've got our qualifications. These are all of the certificates, the education, things that we've done that we've finished. If I've completed a TAFE course, bang, that goes in there. Any other qualifications, any extra courses that you've done, fit right into here. Make sure that you put the name of the place first, then the course that you've completed. And after that, the last part is referees. When we're looking at who our referees are going to be, these are the people that the employee is going to call and say, what do you think of Mr. H? I'm asking you questions to see whether I should give him a job. So make sure that your referees are people that are going to say nice things about you. Don't go, don't put a former boss that fired you because you did no work or you were really lazy when you worked there. Because you might have changed now, but as a worker, they know you as a really lazy person that doesn't want to do the work. So your referees will need to be people that have a really good image of you, that see you as a great worker. They're going to be the people that are going to be able to talk about your skills. Try hard not to put your parents down as your referees, because employers don't want to look at you and say, they know that your parents are going to say very specific things about you. Yes, my son or daughter is amazing, they're great. That's not a fair snapshot of who you are in the employer's eyes. They want to see who you are in other people's eyes. You can ask your teachers at school to be your referees. You can ask the deputy principals, former employers, people that you've done work experience with to talk about who you are as a worker. With our referees, we're going to need similar details to our own personal emails. So we're going to need their name, their phone number, and their relationship to us. So if it is your mom or your dad, it's going to come through in that part of the information pack. So what I would like everyone to do at home, I want you to complete your resume with all of these things in there. I don't just want everything written in, I want you to spell check. I want you to proofread everything that you have. When you have finished it, and this isn't a short process, you need to put a lot of time and a lot of effort into this. When you've completed the long process, I want you to upload your resumes to the Google Classroom. I want to be able to see everything that you've completed. I want you to be ready to apply for jobs. Even if you're not ready yet, you have this, um, the resume that's ready to go. So I'm going to leave this up for just a second. I want you to pause this video so that you can see everything that you need here. Everything should be typed up into Microsoft Word or Google Docs, whatever word processor you prefer. And I'd like this done with your best effort. Thank you all for watching.